first-hand experience of living in Iraq during the current um, U.S. occupation. Dr. Entazar Mohammed Arabi has been on tour organized by Code Pink, Women for Peace. The event tonight will consist of a lecture by Dr. Arabi and a PowerPoint presentation, followed by a question-answer period and then ending with a reception. Um, I'd like to thank Gada, who will be translating for Dr. Arabi tonight. But before we get started, I'd like to mention the names of our sponsors and endorsers. Our sponsors who have helped us out with publicity and donated money to Records Against the War are Central Jersey Coalition Against Endless War, who have been really great with organizing, and the Center for Women's Global Leadership and Graduate Students for World Peace and Social Justice. Our endorsers are Radicals, New Jersey Solidarity, BACA, Islamic Society of Rutgers University, International Socialist Club, Tent State University, Campus Anti-War Network, Coalition for Peace Action, Student and Education Workers Union, uh, People's Organization for Progress, Central Jersey, Big LaRue, and Amnesty International. That's a lot of endorsers. Um, and now I'd like to introduce to you the member of Code Pink who has been traveling with Dr. Arabi, um, Ray. <laughs> Thank you, Suzanne, who's been just an amazing organizer of this event. Uh, as Suzanne said, my name is Ray, and I work for our Code Pink National Office in San Francisco. I've had the joy to be able to travel with Dr. Entisar Arabi this last three and a half weeks. Um, she came with a group of five women from Iraq that landed on March 3rd and came on a Code Pink delegation for International Women's Day, March 8th. And after lots of events at the UN and in DC lobbying to Congress, uh, all of the women split up and started traveling around the US to speak with American people about what's really going on in Iraq and the stories that we are not hearing in our media. Uh, Dr. Entisar is coming directly from Baghdad. She had a very uh, dangerous journey on her way from Baghdad to Jordan and then flying a long way from Jordan to the US. Um, she traveled a, a very far way to share her experience as both a pharmacist from Yarmouk Teaching Hospital in Baghdad and also as a mother. She has five children. So she's here tonight to speak with you as a member of civil society, not as a politician, about what she's seeing every day in her home, in her country. Uh, she's been touring through New York, D.C., Alabama, Florida, and we just came this morning from Western Massachusetts and Boston where we were the last couple of days. Um, I want to just add that tonight is our last big event. Tomorrow she's leaving to go to Jordan and then to Sweden to talk more and share her experiences there. So I can't think of a better place for our last event than at Rutgers University, the home of Tent State, the home of Rutgers Against the War, the, the home of so much activism to counter military recruiters to really proactively stop this war. And so we're really grateful to be here tonight, and I hope you'll join me in welcoming Dr. Entisar Mohammed Arabi. Saddam Hussein and Al-Qaeda and it's not it's all lies, it's not true. 
هناك 250 بروفيسور أكاديمي ومن جميع الطوائف كان سني أو شيعي أو مسلم أو مسيحي قتلوا هؤلاء وكان قد حذر صحفي بريطاني اسمه بروك فيسك عن هذه المجزرة وقال إنها تريد أن تنهي العقل في العراق There were more than 100, there were more than 250 professors who got killed during the occupation um, neglecting the fact that they were Sunni or Shia or other or, or, or whatever you can think of but that that step by itself can tell us that the occupation has something in mind they just want to destroy the civilization that we built in the past and they don't want any intellectual thing to happen they don't want people to learn they don't want people to move on with their lives they want to control people and tell them with falsehood ضربت أكثر المستشفيات وضربت أكثر من مرة ضربت سيارات الإسعاف وأنتم تعلمون جميع معاهدات جنيف تحرم ضرب المستشفيات والمناطق المدنية ولكن الأمريكان عندما يقصفون يقصفون البيوت المدنية ويقصفون المستشفيات ويقصفون سيارات الإسعاف More than one time the hospitals got hit by American vessels by targeted by the airplanes. And another thing that the ambulances got, the, air, the ambulances carrying injured people, civilians, got, got hit by the American airplanes. Another thing, the American, the American soldiers used the white respirator, which is banned by the UN. I mean banned by the UN and today to be used. And they killed innocent people and civilians. أنا أعمل في مستشفى اليرموك من الساعة الثامنة وحتى الساعة الثالثة بعد الظهر في هذا الوقت لا ينقطع صراخ الأمهات وبكاءهن وعندما أذهب إلى صالة الطوارئ أذا أرى هذه الأجسام الجميلة التي خلقها الله وأبدع في خلقها من الأطفال والنساء كلها ممزقة I work from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. and during that time I can't rest and during, there's not one second that passes by and I don't see an infant that being killed, a mother that lost her child, a father that got killed and lost his parents or lost his family. And I look, I look around and I just all I see is blood being shattered. And I just ask myself, those little infants, what did they do to get this kind of punishment? <laughs> نعتبر الصحة ونحن الذين ننقذ المرضى أتعلمون ماذا نفعل اليوم؟ أنا أعتبر نفسي أنا أشارك في ذلك نقتل المرضى لأنه لا يوجد عندنا المواد المعقمة ولا المواد المخدرة كل هذه مفقودة الآن في المستشفى I'm, I'm a pharmacist myself and I work in the hospital and in some cases, actually most of the cases nowadays Sometimes we have to get into merciful kill and kill the patients because lack of what we have. We don't have medicine. We don't have we don't have cleaning utilities. This is paralyzing agent, anesthesia, the intravenous fluid. There is the din found. Also antidepressant, anti uh, anti uh, anti hypertensive. Also the din found in hospital. Most of the cases come and they die, and especially the women who are pregnant. They die and the kid die itself. Most, most of the managers don't want to take responsibility upon killing or getting to like being responsible for the children or the, or the pregnant mother to be killed and the infant to be killed because it's a very high issue and they run away from responsibility because of lack of these medicines that she just mentioned. <laughs> Most of, most of the doctors, either they got killed, or they got kidnapped, or they run away. Most of the 
عندما يصل المريض إلى المستشفى كان قد فارق الحياة. Most of our patients who are running away from the battlefield, civilians, they die in the way to the hospital because of American checkpoints. Like you will find an injured person with, without an arm or without a leg, and you'll find an American soldier looking at him in the eye, seeing him dying, and asking questions if he has weapons, or if he has any bullets, or if he has seen anything. <laughs> أتعلمون ماذا يفعلون بهذه الأموال؟ إنهم يصبغون الجدران ويرفعون الأرضية ولا ويشترون الأثاث والورود ولكن عندما نقول لهم نريد أن نشتري أدوية يقولون هذا ليس عملكم إنه عمل الوزارة. There's a lot of money that being spent on on hospitals, but it hasn't been spent on the on the medicine itself. What they do with the money is just they get new new walls, they get new paint, they get new furniture, and we, we ask him as doctors that we need this type of medicine, we need this kind of treatment. They tell us this is not your business, this is the health ministry business that we will take care of. <coughs> ولكن لكثرة الأعداد من الموت التي تأتي إلى المستشفى لم تسعهم فقام الجيش الأمريكي متفضلا ببناء ثلاجة جديدة للجثث ولم يكلف نفسه بأن يشتريها جاهزة وإنما بناها من الطابور. In, in the Yamuk hospital we have two rooms that contains the, that we put or uh, save the dead bodies and each one of them has the capacity of 20 bodies. Because we have a lot of bodies of being killed or people being dead because lack of treatment, we like the, the capacity it increased. Like the capacity of these rooms cannot hold more than those people, and the American soldiers built a new room to put the bodies in, and they didn't even buy it. They built it out of mud in order to put the bodies inside. <laughs> وأريد أن أتركه جانبا أو يرفعه من الحكم أتعلمون ماذا أتوا لنا؟ أتوا لنا بحكومة طائفية تجعل من الميليشيات فرق موت تقتل العراقيين وفي منتصف الليل Bush came to us telling us that Saddam Hussein is a dictator Okay, we might believe that he's a dictator you can take him away or throw him and do whatever But right now they came us with a government that it's like you will find the Shia people and the Sunnis or other people that they will kill, they will kill the Iraqi people in the name of having one country. Like this, this, this thing between Shia Muslim or is, is gonna is gonna cause a civil war that's gonna cost Iraq its unity. <laughs> بمعدل ثلاثين إلى أربعين سيارة ويكون هناك حظر تجول وعندما يذهبون الأهل صباحا يسألوا عن مصير أولادهم يقولون لهم ليس هناك أحد من عندنا أخذ هؤلاء الأولاد ولكن بعد فترة يكون جثثهم معذبين وملقات خارج المدينة We notice ladies and gentlemen that because of that disunity that's happening because of the government that we had we will have a sect of people like a sect of people that's going to belong to a part of the, of the government will go into Iraq, get around 30 full cars of people, take them away from their families, kill them, torture them, and when their families ask about them, they will find them killed the other day or the week afterwards, being tortured and killed and thrown in the street. <laughs> الحقيقة هنا لا هناك ليس هناك قضاء مستقل والسيادة اليوم للميليشيات والقرار الوطني بيد السفير الأمريكي خليل زاد. Right now they say that Iraq has its own government and they can make their own decisions, but the truth is that those that government can't say anything. The decision of Iraq is 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 in the hands of Khalid Zada, which is the American ambassador in Iraq. The, the, terrorist, the terrorist units in Iraq are killing the unity of Iraq, they're killing the people.
Thank you very much. Me, myself, as a pharmacist, I, I brought my children a kit of medicine that would calm them down in, in case of terror or anything, or if they get scared. But even that medicine itself, it wasn't being affected even in my little child. When I used to hug her, I used to feel her heart bumping into my chest. هؤلاء الارهابيين الذين يتكلم عليهم بوش ويقول اضرب المدن لان هناك ارهابيين هؤلاء الارهابيين هم المدنيين الذي يقصفهم السيد بوش These ladies and gentlemen we can see that these are the terrorists that Bush is saying that they've been occupying the country we can see a little kid over there that his leg has been amputated and we can see an old woman right there and a, and a, and a, and a, like a young lady these are the terrorists that Bush has been saying that they occupy the country and this is the terrorist that's gonna كلكم عندكم امنيات كبيره امنيات شخصيه كبيره تعلمون عندما سالت هذه البنت وعمرها 18 سنه ماذا كانت امنيتها كانت امنيتها ان تقف على رجلها فقط all of you guys have have wishes that you want to accomplish or have dreams but do you know that young 18 year old woman that I asked her what was her wish? She said that I just want to walk on my feet. 
ضرب بيتها قصف وكانت الشظايا قد دخلت إلى ظهرها وأصبحت بدون حركة الآن. Her house got attacked during an aircraft attack, and she got hit by a missile in her back, and she can't walk right now. هذا عمره سبعة عشر سنة. خرج مع مع أصدقائه لكي يأخذ الطعام من المطعم. وعندما ذهب أصدقائه إلى المطعم بقى وحده في السيارة. فكان هناك جيش أمريكي قد قد مر من أمام سيارته. فشعر الجيش الأمريكي بخوف. وعندما يشعر بالخوف يضرب عشوائيا كل من امامه وايضا ضرب في ظهره والان لا يتحرك هذا and, and the lift and the lift picture that we can see is, is a young man he's 16 year old kid he was in a car with his friends and his friends left to the restaurant to get some food he so he was left inside the car by himself when he was sitting by himself there was a, there was an american infantry that was driving by and they felt scared from that guy so they started shooting at him because American soldiers, when they get scared, they just shoot at everybody without, without knowing who's in the car, who is he, is he a little kid, is he old, and he got hit in his back and he can't walk as well. And this old lady had the same story. She was sitting at her house and her house got attacked by an American airplane. And she can't walk anymore. هؤلاء <laughs> وتفضل وراءه هذا الطفل تحت الأنقاض حتى عندما يضرب البيت ويكون هناك من يريد أن يساعد هؤلاء لا تتم مساعدتهم لا يوافق الجيش الأمريكي إلا بعد انتهاء العمليات وهي أما بين سبعة إلى ثمانية أيام. As we we'll notice here that the American attacks only has been attacking the civilians and over here at the right corner, bottom corner of this picture we see an, an infant that got killed and his house got attacked. And by the way, when the American mission has been taking place inside a city to destroy a city, the, the, like the aiding won't be allowed to get inside the city unless the mission has been completed. And that will be after seven to eight days after the mission has been completed. So if someone was surviving or about to have survive or had the hope to survive, won't survive anymore because aid won't get back to them after, unless it's seven or eight days. يسافون عندما يخرجون من المدن هؤلاء المدنيين وهكذا يدخل الجيش الأمريكي عندما يداهم البيوت كان أحد جيراني قد دوهم البيت وكان عملية السيطرة على اثنان من الرجال تعلمون ماذا أتت ثلاث طائرات هليكوبتر تدور حول البيت وهناك أربع حمرات دخلت إلى المنطقة وجيش حرس وطني يحيط بالمنطقة وكانت حديقة قد امتلأت بالجنود الأمريكان وفجر البيت الذي بجانبي لكي يدخل ويأخذ أثنان من الرجال فقط هنا تصوروا من 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 الأرهاب. And as we notice here, the civilians are being taken and captured by the American soldiers at the at the bottom of the left, like the bottom left picture. And on top of that picture, we notice that American soldiers enter or attack one of the houses. And one of the houses that got attacked next to my house had two guys, had two men only. And to capture those two men, they had three helicopters around and more than 50 soldiers to get captured two men inside the house. And they bought the house next to my house in order to get to only two men. And, uh... ترونها العربة فوق أتعلمون هذه العربة التي أوصلنا إليها السيد بوش من التطوع إنها سيارة الإسعاف الجديدة في مدينة القائد. By now we see ladies and gentlemen the lack of supplies. No, not lack. وإنما كان يضرب السيارات فالناس اتخذت هذه العربة لنقل المرضى. 
when, when Bush attacked the ambulances, we had no more ambulances, so we'll use cars as that to mobilize the injured people. Or the pregnant women to the hospitals. That's another civilian house that got bombed and attacked by the American soldiers. And all we know is the only people that get harmed are women and children. Who would allow that to happen to your kids? If one of your kids got, got a flu or a fever, we'll go crazy about that. Who would allow that to happen to their kids? And those and, and the bodies are all ripped bodies because of the attack that they had by the American soldiers. That is the peace that Bush wanted to give us. Most of the people that got killed in the beginning of the war were children. And what would happen is the American airplanes would attack a city. And when the people come out of their house scared because of their house is being attacked, the American soldiers would just kill them using M16 and using the other weapons. And as we notice here, like most of these people are children. And on the bottom right corner, we will see that uh, the Spanish um, uh, correspondent that got killed because he's carrying the truth to other people. He got killed by the American soldiers. That's the hospital of Hadith that got attacked and there was nothing remained. When the American soldiers came and saw this hospital, they took the doctors and they started beating them up to the point that their face got swollen and some of them got killed. And when, when she went to visit one of the, her co-workers and see how he was doing, uh, see how they were doing, their faces were got so swollen. And she was asking why did they beat you up? They said that the American soldiers told us that we help terrorist people. And that's why they beat us up. That's, that's the hospital of Al-Qaim that got bombed and they had nothing and nobody inside it. And when, the, and when the, 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 the head of the hospital went to the general and asked him, why did you guys do such a thing? He said, we're sorry, we did it by mistake. And in order for them to say sorry, they gave $200 to each doctor that was working there. And 
كاملة في جميع أجهزتها وكان المستشفى فرحين لأنه لا يمتلكون هذه الأجهزة ولكن قبل أن تستعمل ضربت ولم يستفد منها أحد شيء. There was a new room that got that got donated to that hospital by the Germans, and that 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 room was only to serve and aid the women and their needs, and it was and even the tools were so new and they haven't been used, and the hospital was itself was happy to receive such a donation because they hadn't they haven't had such a thing in a long time, and before they used it, the American soldiers just found it and destroyed it. هذه بعد ان قصفت القائم مستشفى القائم هذه الخيمه هي البديله لكي يعالج فيها الاطفال هذه اصبحت الان مستشفيات العراق. Now right now after the القائم hospital got, got knocked down we see that this tent is going to be a replacement to the hospital that we used to have. And right now tents are becoming a replacement to the hospitals that we used to have. هذه السيارات الاسعاف كلها تقصف من قبل الجيش الامريكي هذه سيارات اسعاف ذهب سائقها رغم الخطر قالوا له لا تذهب فانك قصف امريكي ولكن اصر ان يقوم بواجبه وعندما حمل الجرحى من الشارع واتى وهو يمشي ضرب وقتل هو وقتل الجرحى الذين داخل السياره as we notice here, ladies and gentlemen, as we mentioned before, the ambulances are being attacked. And the upper, the upper right picture is an ambulance that the, the, the driver of the ambulance was told not to go out because there is an attack, an American attack. And he said, no, I'm going to take the injured people out. And we loaded the injured people inside the ambulance. The ambulance got hit and attacked and he died and the injured people died as well. عندما تخصف أي مدينة كل جميع أهلها يطلعون لاجئين ويكون مكانهم أما في الصحراء وأما في البيوت القديمة وأما في البيوت في المدارس هؤلاء عائلة قد ولد لها طفل هذا جديد والرعاية الصحية الآن هكذا زرت هذه العائلة وتسألني هذه عن كيفية صحة ابنها and when, when a home or a, or a town get disrupted by the American soldiers, the people who live in that town, they go in the desert and live there. And as we notice here, it's a family that their house got, or their town got knocked down, and they took the desert as a shelter for them. And this is an infant that was born in the desert, and his mom was asking the doctor if, if her child is, was in good health, does he need any medical care? How is he doing? For those of you in the back that can't see the slide, I'll just read it out loud. Child mortality. Before the occupation under sanctions, Iraq ranked number 80 in the worldwide list of deaths of children under five. Today, Iraq is number 36. Severe malnutrition in children has almost doubled since the occupation. As Dr. Arabi said, Iraqi doctors are being killed, kidnapped, or they're fleeing their country. Over 200 Iraqi doctors have been kidnapped for ransom, and over 1,000 have fled the country. After bombing and looting, money that was supposed to go to rebuilding and desperately needed medical supplies has instead gone to superficial repairs like painting buildings, new furniture, and flowers, not for the medical need that's desperately needed. وجميع اللقاحات الآن عندما سألت الأمهات هل تأخذون أولادكم لتلقيحهم فقالوا كيف نلقح أطفالنا ونحن أصبح لنا ثلاثة أشهر خارج بيوتنا كيف لنا أن نحصل على اللقاحات؟ He said the house is down there is that people have been taken as shelter and when they go and ask the moms have, have their children have their children taken vaccines the, the parents will, add, will tell us how can we have we buy our kids magazines and we can't even have houses for ourselves to live in. 
نتيجة عدم وجود الرعاية الصحية ونتيجة التلوث الذي حصل. The, most of the diseases that got, the, the got سيطر عليه. Like the, most of the diseases that got prevented during Saddam Hussein regime, right now they are appearing because of the, because there is no medical care and there is there is no social life. As the polio, tuberculosis, hepatitis, cholera, all the meningitis, all this now appear in in the ground. Right now, the American soldiers, when they want to 
ambush at a place that he goes around it by the Iraqi National Guards from the front, back, and the sides. So from, from what I see, the American soldiers are using the, the Iraqi National Guards to protect them from attacks. So how are they going to protect them? وَإِنَّ بَقَاءَ الْجَيْشِ الْأَمْرِيكِ مَعْنَاهُ زِيَادَةَ الْعَنَفْ وَالْعِرَاقِ And the American soldiers, if they want to stay there, that means there is more killing, more, more massacres are going to take place. وَالْأَفْضَلِ الْجَيْشِ الْأَمْرِيكِ أَنْ يَخْرُجْ وَإِذَا كَانَ الْأَمْرِيكَانِ خَائِفِينَ يعني البوش السيد بوش خائف على العراقيين هناك أمم متحدة مسؤولة عن الدول وليس السيد بوش هو الذي مسؤول عن الدول if the, it will be better for the American soldiers to withdraw from Iraq. And if Bush really cares about Iraq, he would have left a long time ago and it will leave the matter of Iraq to the Iraqis and the United Nations to take care of Iraq. Thank you for uh, your presentation. I want to ask you about uh, the real credibility and the popularity of uh, government, uh, the Iraqi government members and uh, their ability to gov uh, for governance in case that uh, the American will withdraw. And uh, what do you think and uh, the Iraqi population, th uh, people think about uh, Saddam Hussein Prime. Thank you. And the, the, current, the current election that took place in Iraq it was fake, and I saw it in my own eyes. They came with the boxes ready from before, and I don't even have to have a government, a government ID or government issued ID in order to go and elect the person that I want to be in the government. So I can go once, twice, or four times, or as many times as I want to be there. Most of the people in the current government right now, they're for the policy in Iran, or they want to be with the Iran, with the Iranian policy. 
الان العلم عندنا قد تاخر كثيرا اتعلمون لماذا لان هناك كثير من الاعياد الدينيه وهناك كثير من قطع الطرق ومنع التجول لان هناك مناسبات دينيه قد استحدثتها هذه الحكومه الطائفيه right now we noticed that the science and technology have been going backwards in Iraq and because of and that the reason for that is because we have a lot of celebrations a lot of uh, holidays and those holidays did not exist before and they exist now because we have we have one sided government that leads Sectarian, sectarian government. That's what we have right now. And we have a lot of holidays that have been taking place. Yeah, I'd like to ask you. Um, the, the, this government has been accused of starting this war. Uh, with, uh, rather, the, the true intentions were to go after Iraq's assets, namely the oil. Do you agree with that? And uh, what's your position? هذا واضح للعيان يعني اني يعني الشعب العراقي يعرف هذا وجميع العالم يمكن يتقي يعني يعرف هذه الحقيقه لانه حقيقه واضحه انا اتيت الى هنا ورايت الديمقراطيه التي يتبجح بها السيد بوش رايت بانه نخرج ونتكلم ونخرج تظاهرات ولكن رايت ان ان القول بانه of course, what you said makes sense, and this is happening in front of the whole world that Iraq got occupied because of the oil. And when I came here in America, I noticed the, demo the democracy that Bush has been talking about, showing off to the whole people that you guys can talk whatever you want to talk, you guys can do whatever you want to do, but I have the final say. So if Bush said that we're going to go to war, we're going to stay in Iraq, that happens. If he said we're going to withdraw out of Iraq, that's going to happen too. Uh, thank you for giving your uh, unique perspective. Uh, I really appreciate it. And, and my question is, uh, I guess most of us here in this room, the only way we're going to know anything about what's going on in Iraq is through the world media. And I'd like to know as to what you think uh, the world media is doing uh, in its role uh, to kind of expose what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis. And what's your take on it? Of 
a medicine that we're giving to a person to because the American scholars they know that they're gonna destroy it. Uh, I'm from Palestine, and when I saw your presentation, I felt like I'm seeing the same photos from my country. Uh, it's very hard, but to tell you the truth, for me as a Palestinian, I don't, I don't see any uh, hope or, uh, uh, or I don't see any hope or white spot somewhere in the long black tunnel because of the Israeli occupation. My question, as an Iraqi woman, do you see any hope or any future? for a better life in, uh, in Iraq. How do you see the future of that? Madame-Tunaka-Hayat-Laz-Yajib-Ayakun-Hunaka-Amen. <laughs> أما الشيء الآخر الذي أتيت أنا أردت أن أأتي لكي أعرف الشعب الأمريكي الحقيقة وعندما يكون الإنسان بيده الحقيقة يكون أقوى في الدفاع عنها فأنا أرى كأن هناك نفق مظلم ولكن هذا النور الصغير هو موجود في الشعب الأمريكي القوي Whenever there is life there is hope so I'm not giving up and what I notice is that I see hope in, in the American people coming here and telling them the truth. So when you know the truth, you can defend your case much stronger. Hey, um, you spoke about the false regime in Iraq right now and um, how it's aligned itself with uh, Iran's plans. And I was just wondering from, our pers from the Western world's perspective, um, we, we realize that the Arab world pretty much has, uh, has joined forces in, uh, in hating the United States, but do you feel that um, there's some sort of, is there any fear that once, if there is hope of us getting out of there, that you'll be susceptible to um, perhaps like Iran role or another uh, dominant Arab country? I'm sorry, I didn't get your question here, please. I'm saying like, uh, so right now it seems like the Arab world is all united against the United States, okay. but perhaps if the United States does get out any time in the near future, do you feel that the Iraqi people might be susceptible to an attack from a more powerful Arab nation at that point? And I will tell you that the Iraqi people don't hate the United States people or the Americans. The, 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 the Iraqis wish if you would ask him back in the days, they would say, I want to come to America and study it, get my education. But the awful way that the American soldiers treated the, Amer the Iraqis inside Iraq made the Iraqi people inside Iraq hate the Americans. And when I went inside the cities that got bombed and attacked by the American soldiers with the American aid or the American medicine and I went to the people that got attacked and I told them, do you guys believe that this aid is coming from the U.S., they said, no, we will not believe it. And 
لا ولماذا اتخذوا السيد بوش مرة أخرى؟ When I when I told them that the American people are different than the American government, they told us that the, the, the Iraqi people that got that got wounded or injured by the American soldiers, those Iraqis told us why would the Americans re-elect Bush again? فقلت لهم إن الشعب الأمريكي يرفض يرفض الاحتلال ويرفض أن تكون هناك حروب وإنما يحب السلام فقال ولا ولا يعرفون الآن ما يجري في العراق إنهم يتصورون إن الجيش الأمريكي يؤدي خدمة جليلة للعراقيين فقال وما بالهم وكل هذا العلم عندهم الإنترنت and when when I when I was asking when I was telling the Iraqi people that those American people they don't know what exactly is going through Iraq they believe that the American soldiers are doing a noble thing inside Iraq they're there to free Iraq from the old regime but then they tell us what well, what if the, all all of the media that's there the internet all of the other sources that that you can get information from. Can they see the truth? Can they see what the American soldiers are doing to us? So you guys tell me, what shall I tell my people to believe me that the Americans don't want Iraq to be occupied or they want the, Iraq, the American soldiers to be out of Iraq? Hi, um, I'm running for Congress in the 5th District against Scott Garrett, and the answer is to vote for people who want us out of the war. And I would just like to say I'd love to get a hold of some of those pictures that you show of the children, so that the next time one of these right-wing religious politicians say they're pro-life, I can show them the picture and say, tell me how pro-life you are when you vote for this.
me and my family, when we used to go out, we used to kiss each other. Right now, during the Iraqi war, and we would wish to die because if we got if we got kidnapped, they would ask us for a ransom, and we don't have the money. And if we get injured, we need medicine, and we don't have the money for that for the medicine. And there was no medicine even if the money was there. So we would wish to die. <laughs> الوقت الذي تأخذه من البيت إلى الم... إلى الكلية لا يستغرق إلا خمسة عشر دقيقة. أتعلمون الوقت الذي تصل به ساعتين للذهاب وساعتين للإياب ولا تأخذ إلا ساعة واحدة للعلم هذا في كلية الطب الآن. Right now my daughter is a doctor. She's in med school. She's she's studying in med school. And before the war, the distance from her house to the school used to be taking 15 minutes. And right now, during the war, it takes two hours to go there and two hours to come back. And she spends only one hour in her school to learn. كل الطرق مقطعة أو أو موجود فيها checking point. وعندما يكون عندها امتحان تذهب في ساعة متقدمة مبكر حتى تستطيع أن تلحق بالامتحان. Most of the most of the wars have been blocked, and there are a lot of checkpoints. And when she has an exam, she has to leave. Much earlier than she used to leave, so she can get there on time and study or prepare for the exam and take the exam. وإذا وصلت إلى الامتحان تقول لم أؤدي الامتحان بصورة صحيحة لأن كل ما كان في دماغي قطع. And she used to arrive to the exam and take her exam on midterm. She couldn't concentrate on the exam because she would be like, I'm, I'm being distracted with what's happening to my people, what's happening to me. Thanks for coming. Uh, I wanted to ask, um, given the, the current administration stance, it seems as if writing to our politicians is too passive. So I guess my question to you is, how can we help you get the medicine that you need? Where can we invest? Where can we donate? Um, what can we do? Medicine is not being allowed into the country unless it comes through the health minister or the ministry of health. And by the time the ministry of health approved the medicine to go into Iraq, that the, the, the medicine itself would expire. ولكن هناك شحة في بعض الأجهزة المهمة التي نحتاجها في العمليات وقد وضعناها على الويب سايت مع كوفيد. And right now we need uh, surgical or equipments that we can use for to do or to perform surgery, and that's something we need and we posted online on the website that she has. Code pink. Code pink. Code Code Oh, code pink. That website is www.womensaynotowar.org.womensaynotowar.org.womensaynotowar.org.womensaynotowar.org.womensaynotowar.org.womensaynotowar.org.womensaynotowar.org.womensaynotowar.org.womensaynotowar.org.womensaynotowar.
troops over there, if they have any degree of respect for the people, or are they uh, completely ruthless? Like,
what she asked us to do earlier, as I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that she asked us to, to get involved politically and to do what we did in the Vietnam era. I'm 55 years old. I protested the war in Vietnam. I marched on Washington. I did all those wonderful things back then. But right now, uh, marching, and I'll be there on the 29th at the United for Peace and Justice demonstration, supporting Code Pink, all these are good things. Coming together and feeling like we're, we're, we're unified in a vision is a good thing. But if we don't get involved in the grassroots politics, everybody here should know who their congressman is, uh, should be involved in putting a lot of pressure at the grassroots level. If anyone here has Scott Garrett as their congressman, you should know who he is. And uh, the lady I came here with, Camille Labadi, will be running against him. So I urge you at the end of this, if you want to be practically involved in putting somebody in the Congress of the United States who's going to oppose this war, who's going to oppose this president strongly, please come up here later on and talk to Camille. And even if you're not registered to vote and you can't sign her nominating petition, you can still volunteer to work for the campaign. We need grassroots people, young people with energy and time to struggle to put this lady in Congress where she'll have some power to really do something. So what do you think of that?
اولا بالنسبه للميليشيات التي دخلت البلد فهي بموافقه الجيش الامريكي لانه قبل قبل الاحتلال كانت الحدود مصانه ولم يدخل احد من الميليشيات وكان الامن مستتف في زمن صدام or the militias that got into the into Iraq, they got they got approved or they got proven by the Americans, and they wouldn't be allowed into Iraq unless the Americans approved that. Because before the occupation, those militant groups got into Iraq uh, weren't able to get into Iraq. بالنسبة للتجديد اللي دا يتم الآن وأنا شاهدت حتى بالمترو كان هناك اثنين من الجنود ويحاولون. يستغلون المارة من الشباب لكي يدخلوهم بالجيش. أنا ذهبت إلى الكونغرس وشاهدتهم بملابسهم الجميلة والفخر والاعتزاز بنفسهم. فتخيلت الجندي الأمريكي وهو في العراق في بلد غير بلده وفي لغة غير لغته وهو خائف لا يعلم ماذا لا لا يعرف ماذا يفعل بنفسه. هناك الشباب الأمريكي يدفع الدماء وهؤلاء الذين في السياسة يستلمون المبالغ من النفط والشركات التي تعمل الآن في العراق. She said, she said that she noticed at the, at the subway when she was there and she noticed at the Congress when she went to visit that reporters were there in their beautiful suits recruiting people and telling people to join the army and this and that and she, and she just looked and had another image or a flash image that was in Iraq of an American soldier that's there being killed or is going to get killed for no reason. He doesn't know why he's there. He's in a country that's not his country. He doesn't speak the language and he's scared to death what's going to happen in the future. And those people who recruit, who recruit them, they're just here to get the money. And the politicians, they just get the money and pocket whatever they can get, pocket from the oil industry. هنا عندما أسأل أي واحد منكم هناك جانب الخير وجانب الشر هناك بناء وهناك تدمير هناك بناء وتدمير من يختار البناء ومن يختار التدمير؟ There is two sides for everything. There is good and bad. There is building and there is destroying. What, who, would, who would pick destroying and who would pick building? أتذهب إلى تدمير بلد وقتل أطفال وقتل مدنيين are you going to go and destroy people's lives and destroy people's buildings? Or are you going to go and build? In a way or another, as human nature, we're not going to allow ourselves, or the human nature is not going to allow us to destroy. We're always, our, our reason here is to build and build and build. مثل ما تعيشون هنا في بلدكم بأمان وأطفالكم يعيشون حياتهم نريد لأبناءنا في العراق أن يعيشون بأمان وأطفالنا أن يأخذوا نصيبهم من الدراسة والصحة والأمن. As you guys here live in America and have health and wealth and hopes and wishes and sometimes we fulfill them. We ourselves we want that for us and we want that for our children. We want our children to live their lives, go to school normally, play. Learn, do whatever they can do. Uh, hi, um, I wondered if, if you could maybe say something, if this is a problem, um, about uh, women's health, specifically for sexual health, if there are heightened rates of um, sexual assault um, as a result of the occupation, or um, if there are any precautions being taken حدثت هذا وكثير من العراقيين العراقيات تعتقلوا وفي سجن ابو غريب كان هذا الشيء موجود ولم يظهر الا بعد فتره وكانوا نساء في داخل السجن يعملون اوراق لاهلهم 
أو لأحد من أقاربهم يقول لهم أضربوا هذا السجن نريد أن نموت لكثرة ما يتعرضون له من تعذيب واعتداء وفعلا السجن تعرض عدة مرات للضرب والقصف من قبل المجاهدين يعني الذين يضربون هذا المكان لأنهم من بداخل السجن أراد أن يموت نتيجة للتعذيب الحاصل عليه The, the, during the Iraq, the, during the occupation, the American soldiers act, uh, took prisoners, women as prisoners, and put them in jail. And those women, they got abused, they got raped, they got tortured, to the point that these women were asking the people to kill them. They got abused to the point that they wanted to die. Thank you for being here. Um, I want to say on 